It's part six of two, and I need me some curry. I've got the pot, I've got the rice, and I've got all the miscellaneous ingredients. I want some money, damn it. I don't know how fast canned curry spice goes rotten, but I usually just buy 10 or 20, because then I'll know that I'll have used it up by the time that I need to get more, and they'll be at the shop. Me being able to buy them is a bigger problem than them going bad. There's gonna be a lot of cooking in this part. At the start of every curry recipe, we need some cooked rice. Cooked rice gets used a lot, and it seems like the other category in this are for things that are used for ingredients in other recipes. In fact, I can't think of any recipe that actually uses uncooked rice. So, don't know why I ever hang on to it otherwise. I'm making milk curry because spring 20 is Ash's birthday, and he really likes milk curry, so that'll be our present for him. And a level up in cooking! When you level up, the quality of your dishes goes up a little bit. You level up by making new recipes. Also, occasionally when you're cooking and you discover a new recipe, you'll actually learn another one. There is a process to it, but I don't know what it is, and it's convoluted, so it doesn't matter. That's spicy curry. It's the most expensive one, probably because spicy chilies are expensive on their own. And there's also seaweed curry, which is a little bizarre to me. It just looks like a black slab on rice. But it's also worth a decent amount on its own, too. I'm keeping the other spicy curry because I also mentioned Kana likes those, and I want to give him at least one. Can anyone tell me what kind of hat that is? Is that a beret? It just looks strange to me, and it's a mushroom flap on his head. Here we go. Spicy curry is his number one favorite gift. Every character has one of those. It's always a cooked dish, and they have unique dialogue for it when you give it to them. Today, the Harvest Goddess is going to give us something that's completely useless because I'm playing this on an emulator. And it might be pretty useless if, even if I were playing it on the console. I haven't actually been up to the Harvest Goddess's spring. It's off to the right of the very top of the mountain. If we were to go up to where we usually hold the cooking festival, and then just take a ride, you can find it right there. But as someone mentioned in the thread, we cannot marry the Harvest Goddess, even if we were male. So there's no reason to talk to her. It's not like we never see her anyway. So this is the multiplayer field. This is kind of an early attempt by Marvelous to do an online portable Harvest Moon multiplayer game. It's a little convoluted. What it is, you grow crops here, but you can't harvest them yourself. But you can invite friends over, and then they'll all kind of work on the field with you. They can take the crops for themselves. Since I'm on an emulator, I can't really do that. Or maybe there is an option, but it'll also be convoluted, and I don't want to bother with it. And I can't see the online community for Tale of Two Towns being as active as it is for, say, A New Beginning or even Story of Seasons. Nor does the multiplayer seem all that interesting for this, as opposed to those. I'll keep that in mind, as I give you nothing. But next time you'll regret it. I'll look into it a bit more, see if I can actually do something with it. But I'm not holding my breath. Maybe I'll do something with my physical copy. 
If anyone in the thread or the comments wants to help out with that, let me know. Here is the fun of irrigation trenches. Water at once, it fills the entire thing. Though do keep an eye on my stamina. You can see it going down again quickly. Trenches literally just speed it up. It's not a, a decrease in stamina or water use. You use as much water and stamina as it would take if we were to do each spot individually. It just makes it faster. Which is perfectly fair and perfectly fine with me. I've made bread before, but I did a bit of work earlier. And someone, probably Reyna, gave me some blueberry jam. So I'm gonna make jelly bread. It's one of the best uses of jams that you get from other people. I feel like Dr. Ayame's apple jam is worth more than the jelly bread, but blueberry jam is usually worth more if you make jelly bread. While it was raining, I discovered a new critter. Helena Morpho, I feel like that one is worth a decent amount of money. Good idea to sniff it out if it's raining. And here's why the Harvest Goddess is especially annoying when she stops you with these. You might have noticed the fish were still swimming around when she stopped me. And when I get out of the cutscene, they're gone. She stops time, but she doesn't stop the fish. Which means I lost all of those, and I wanted those. On the plus side, I discover a blue waterfall. You get that by hand fishing in the rain. The cooking in this game, as opposed to A New Beginning and Story of Seasons, is so much better, because you actually get to make and discover the recipes on your own. In those games, you have to find the recipes first, and then you're able to cook. Tale of Two Towns wins out a good bit on the whole freedom front, in comparison to most other Harvest Moons. Rice porridge has got to be one of the laziest recipes. Cook rice, and then cook rice. These udon noodles, I believe I hang on to. Because once I get the frying pan, I can do a couple things with it. And I just wanted to use the fish paste, which has been sitting there all month. Does anyone know the nutritional benefits and nutritional facts of bamboo shoots? Here's what I was talking about. Occasionally you make a recipe, you'll immediately figure out how to make another related recipe. Azasuke I wouldn't be able to make right now though. And I level up again. Don't know if you're able to tell, but the first fanfare was actually a much worse and more distorted quality than the second one. Don't know what the deal is there. This recipe is a pretty decent way to get money. Making pudding. Pudding's worth a good amount. But I have a couple ingredients that I can cook with it additionally. Pudding plus cooked rice makes rice pudding. And I have that honey sitting around, which I don't have any other use for right now. When I combine that with pudding, I get honey pudding. And both of those are worth more than pudding on their own. Looking forward to actually being able to make my own honey. But I need to upgrade the farm first. So let's take a look at what all that cooking is worth. Generally, the more ingredients you put in, the better the price. There we go, the puddings especially. It's gonna be some nice cash. Make up for all that curry I bought. You may never come in, Rutger, but I still can't stop you.
Yeah, talk it up, motherfucker. So here's something for you folks in the thread to consider, though I'm not going to hold a vote on just yet. We are allowed to move from Bluebell to Konohana now, if we wanted to focus on crops instead. Bluebell is working out pretty nicely for us right now. But further on down the line, things that Eileen will be able to get us by upgrading our farms and what have you. There will be different things that we can get in Bluebell, there will be different things that we get in Konohana, and some of them will be more useful for us. Specifically the makers, like we'll be able to make a beehive over in Bluebell, and I'm hanging on to the honeycomb for that. But also the seed maker over in Konohana, cheese and yogurt in Bluebell, wine in Konohana. But we have to be living in one particular farm before we can get those. So keep it in the back of your head, so that in the event the vote does come around, you know what your decision is. Now, today is Ash's little sister's birthday. She likes colorful bouquets. Bouquets you talk to Cam in order to make. Colorful bouquets are basically the slapdash bouquets. Just a combination of any flowers, including herbs. They count as flowers. We'll get you that. Colorful bouquets are not worth a lot of money. But this is as good as any opportunity to show it off and to get her a gift. If you say so. Pretty easy. Now I've upgraded my request level, not only can I accept more requests, I can accept a new type of request, rank C. Rank C isn't much more difficult than rank D, which is what we've been doing so far. It's not really until we get to rank B and A that the difficulty for those really amps up. Also, I figured I noticed that my lavender was going bad, so I figured I should go ahead and use it. All the ingredients that you would use to make an herb salad, just combine it with bread, you make an herb sandwich. And here's another curry recipe I hadn't done yet. This is just basic curry rice. This recipe makes me feel kind of, eh. It's an egg rice bowl, and I get the idea of it, but I don't know why I poured in a bottle of seaweed for it. Oh, the chicken festival is going to be fun. Alright, so here's the problem. I only have two chickens, and I haven't had them for very long. My best one only has one heart. I don't see this going very well. Like with any animal festival in Harvest Moon, all we have to do is us and our chickens stand in a line, and then the winner is the one who stands in a line better. So right off the bat, I'm thinking, I'm boned. Ash has a silky chicken. We haven't even unlocked those yet. Silky chickens are like the badass, expensive chickens. So there's no way I'm gonna win. And for all I know, the crash test dummy to the right could have a better chicken, too. <laughs> How does everyone think my chicken's name's pronounced? It looks like Oyo, but you could be weird with it. Oh, we oh, we oh. You'll be surprised. <laughs> he just wa he just wanders in off screen like he was hiding out in the bathroom, wasn't actually doing any judging. So <laughs> immediately I'm thinking, that doesn't sound right. Oh, you cannot you cannot be serious. One heart. I have one heart, and I won the chicken festival. Any other game, this would not happen. 
In fact, I'm pretty sure this wasn't supposed to happen. I just beat the random number generator. I have no idea, but somehow I won the chicken festival. Winning a festival also increases the friendship points you have with everyone in the audience. I get a pretty good prize for it, too. Though I have no idea what it is. Like just looking at it, I was thinking a jar of organs? Nah, it's yogurt. Yogurt we wouldn't be able to make. So that's kind of cool. But I can't cook with it either. So, 1600 bucks. Oh dear. Another job for Enrique. That's going to be amusing. So let's get right into it. Since it's Saturday, Enrique and his brother head over to Raul's place. God, he creeps me out so much. I do like the reason that he's doing this. Not because of salesmen or anything, but just because he's a dick. That's not a laugh face. Oh, Enrique. I hope I never have to talk to you again. On the plus side of the rank C missions, even if the items that you get as rewards aren't usually any better than what you would get for rank D, you do get more money, at least. It seems like rank C jobs, at the most, you'll just have more items you need to get. It's the final cooking festival. Main dish and dessert are the categories I feel like we could handle on our own, even without Rutger. But whatever. I wish it were that easy. I'd make pudding every day. Funny how by putting milk and egg in a pot, I also get caramel. Don't know what that's doing on it. So, like, there's a pudding recipe, and there's also a flan recipe. But the flan is a... the flan looks like a savory dish. Or perhaps I'm thinking of Story of Seasons, but... Either way, is that like a cultural difference? Or something I'm missing? I have no idea. Five-star pudding. Hell yes. Ah, my sheep finally has grown up. I can gather the wool. I'm gonna be hanging onto the wool. I'm not gonna really sell any of them, because I want to have a backup so that eventually, once I get the tool to do it, I can make yarn out of the wool, but also so I can use them for the requests where I get new clothes. And we go through the same old garbage. At first, Konohana won. Just because I wanted to look at the trash talk. I was going to settle for this particular save until I saw the reward I got. God damn it. It's the end of the month. I might as well just wait for the next year. 
Because I can't plant them, they're not gonna grow, I don't have enough days. So I reset, and try again. And the dialogue got a bit different this time. They don't sound as angry at each other now. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, they kind of suck. Yeah, you kind of do. Oh, okay. And it turns out it's because they don't hate each other as much now. Funny how doing the thing that's keeping them separated is making them come together. I don't get it. They hate each other because of the cooking festival, so when you do the cooking festival, they stop hating each other. Tail two towns. Oh, yes. I don't really have a use for adamantite. And if I do, it's so far off, there's no reason to hang on to it. But that's worth a good chunk of money. That's going in the shipping bin. And here's the reason the mayors aren't as vicious with each other anymore. It seems to count the increase in their friendship meter even before the Harvest Goddess actually shows you. So that's interesting. Fifty-one hundred and twenty. I'll need to check again, but I feel like that's as much as Mithril is worth, too. Going ahead and buying another cow. No reason not to fill up the barn. So when I think it was Word on the Wind had its suggestion, name the cow after something loud that starts with B. Nothing quite as loud as boom, so... Also, the duck likes me a little bit more now, since I've been feeding it every day. If I were to just pick it up and throw it, that would also count, but it would take much longer. So, if you have the items to feed to the different animals, no reason not to. Eventually, if they like us enough, I could go up to the summit of the mountain, and occasionally the animals would be there and they could give me gifts. I'm only really doing it with the ducks because they're the easiest to get. They hang around in the area with the kill of fish, and that's what they eat, so... At the end of every month, the game reminds you to harvest your crops. Even if the very next day there would be a fully grown crop, it's going to die as soon as it changes over. So harvest them, or sickle them to get rid of them, or even wait to sickle them in summer. It's up to you. Of course, just my luck, since I wasn't paying attention. It's raining, and all my animals are out in the rain. And they're kind of pissed. This increases their stress meter, not by too much, really. Just by talking to them and feeding them, that decreases their stress so they won't get sick. Just work quickly. And we close out the part, as we always should, with the panda. Aw, eventually he'll like me. God damn it. But that's it for our first spring. Join me next time, we'll jump headlong into summer, and we'll see all the new things that unlock.